Hello. <laughs> Just sat in my shed having a cup of tea. <laughs> so today I'm going to do um, a little job on my bike. I've been trying to do or been wanting to do for quite a while. And I'm just going to swap over the front suspension from a spring shock to air shocks. So it should be quite a nice, easy upgrade. I did some researching on the shocks. Um, the direct replacement for what's on. So I'm hoping it should be quite an easy change. Um, I don't have to change all the head at the top. I'm hoping I can just unscrew the stanchions of the existing forks and just slide the new stanchion straight in and job done. Um, so it should be quite an easy and a nice upgrade. So I'll finish my cup of tea and then <laughs> I'll get on with it. I'll right, finish my cup of tea. Let me take you in and show you these shocks. They've come out and they look really, really smart. All a nice paint finish to them. Little knob on the bottom there for adjusting the rebound. Just show you there's a little sticker it's all really nice and smart little sticker there telling you how much air pressure to put in for the rider's weight and the recommended tyre pressures little dial on the top for compression then under there unscrew that and that's where you put the air in now one of the issues I had I wanted to check how much air pressure was in the shock um, and I wasn't able to determine that there wasn't anything nearly paperwork or anything what says it comes shipped with X amount so I didn't know if there's 30 psi in there or 400 psi so I thought, right, I'll put my bike pump on it. So my bike pump takes me up to 160 PSI. So I thought if I get that connected on, it'll tell me what's in the shock. So the problem I've got is my pump connector is exactly the same size diameter as the top of the valve of the top of the connection this is the suspension connection so it wouldn't fit over the valve so I thought right I've got an air compressor in the garage and I know that fits I then thought do I really want to stick a car a big compressor on a little bike shock and try trying to get in a tiny amount of air I just thought I'm going to explode everything because I won't be able to control exactly such a small amount of pressure so I was talking to my son he's quite up on all sorts of things here James and he said get some tyre valve extenders I hadn't come across these before, but he uses them on his HGV lorries. So what it does, screw thread there. Oh, difficult to get it going one end. Screw that on there, look, it lifts it up. It sits on top of the valve. And it allows me to fit my pump connection on and that way I can get air in the shock and I'm not having to spend 50 60 quid on a decent shock pump because I can just use my bike pump thanks for that James
So let's see what it weighs. Two thousand seven hundred and ninety eight grams. So two point eight kilos. I'll show you my plan. <laughs> so my my plan is to unscrew my caliper, take the cable out the fittings, and then take the caliper right out the way. Unscrew my mud guard and my light, my little brackets here. So then they're all off. Disconnect my light there and then I don't think I need to change all this triple head I can just unscrew these same on either side take these off because these need to go back onto my old forks these bump stops because when I'm turning my wheels they just catch against the frame you know what I mean stop you damaging anything and then I should be able to just swap the new fork straight over. This is the little clip for the brake cable. Bit of suspension lube spray. A bit of a clean while well, I've got nothing there. That's through the original bump stops which need to go on
once I've got everything set right I'll get the little torque wrench out and just torque all the wheels up and everything that's everything back on I'm going to get everything tightened up now and I'll check the air pressure um, I don't know if I'll get out for a ride today because it's raining <laughs> or it has been but no I'm really pleased with that these are really handy if you're buggering about on a bike little bike torque wrench I've had this years but they're just so handy You can hear the wheel grating on the caliper. If you can hear it, it's been a bit faster. It's just catching on one of the brake pads really, really slightly. So we'll sort that out now. Can't hear it when it's just can't. It doesn't, I just can't see it catching or hear it when it's going slow. There. I need to tweak the rotor disc slightly. So I'll do it with these, but I just want to put some masking tape around the jaws. So I don't mark the rotor. Hmm. Got some a bit thicker than masking tape, some electrical tape. And if I could find the end of it. Here we go. Should have had some of that on my finger. Right. Let's see if I can hear where it's. Somewhere there. I'm pleased with that. <laughs> that took some buggering about. Well, I'm really pleased with these. Oh, there they are, look. Just went straight on. I need to get some double check my air in them and I'd have gone for a ride but oh, that's all it's done for 
weeks here is rain. Um, but no, I'm I'm really pleased with them. It should be a nice little upgrade. And um, in a future video, I'll let everybody know I've gone on with them. Come down front wheel first. Back wheel. Right, we'll check the air and the fork. Put a little cover cap off. Put a little extendable valve thingy on. to put my pump on a little piece of, on a stand because it won't reach there we go on that saying at the moment there is about 70 in there now I've got 120 and there's look 120 there hopefully jobs are good <laughs> so what I'll do um, I'll give it a try out when it's um, not raining I'll go for a ride off roady thing and then I can see play with the compression or let more air out or put a bit more in so I hope this little video helps anybody out with thinking of changing don't take long and it's a really really easy to do so thank you very much for watching <laughs>